lease on gerbils in Asia, Central Asia right. and Northern China. Right. And they came across to Europe and bit people and that was that. Well, not not the gerbils as such, uh, but uh, the I mean the fleas on the men who'd been exactly exactly the fleas right. uh, the fleas and possibly domestic animals uh, that it came into the domestic uh, animal populations or humans and then uh, came to Europe uh, some twelve to fifteen years later. It showed up. We now know that it showed first up in harbor cities, then spread through Europe, and that that happened several times right, during the medieval period. And, and the climate had a lot to do, the weather had a lot to do with it. Yes, indeed. Uh, when it's um, a warm and uh, wet condition in Central Asia, the gerbil population are uh, building up. And uh, when it's warm, it's also a good condition for the fleas. Then uh, the, the, the gerbil population has to be above a certain level for a couple of years uh, to maintain uh, the population and to uh, cause an outbreak in uh, the gerbil population, in the wildlife. Right. Then when it becomes a, uh, a drier condition, drought, uh, then the gerbil uh, tends to crash and the the fleas become too crowded on the gerbil so they jumps uh, into other uh, mammalian oh, species right. including humans right now you have to settle this i think really very very important because there will be a lot of people out there this morning looking at their children's gerbils playing around sweet little things playing around in their cages and all that and thinking oh my god could they kill us all they I'm should not they I'm should not be afraid but, they should, but were the <laughs> were the gerbils that did these terrible things to us were they the same sort of gerbils that, that our children have got today as uh, pets? yeah it's a similar species yeah um, but uh, but you have to remember that they have to have the, the plague bacterium uh, and ah. i'm pretty sure that they don't have the plague bacterium <laughs> uh, here well, that, in uh, europe that immensely reassuring <laughs> and you learned all this from from tree rings or something yeah, the, the tree ring um, through the tree ring data we can get the climate uh, proxies ah. and we can reconstruct uh, what the climate uh, has been during uh, the past right or through the past that, that is fascinating has it got any relevance to today i mean given that the bubonic plague has gone um and and, and that uh, well men... you have plague uh, occurring all over the world uh, annually and particularly in central asia when it's a favorable condition uh, it suddenly is an outbreak in the uh, gerbil population or in the wildlife oh. and then occasionally uh, people are infected but we know uh, quite a lot about uh, about it today so people are treated and, and uh, they do fine uh, uh, however uh, and however had there been a reservoir here in Europe uh, we would have seen similar things here in Europe we don't see uh, local plague outbreak uh, here in Europe anymore well and long may that continue <laughs> professor Stenthus fascinating stuff thank you so much